Next, I'd like to share with you some of my favorite new productivity enhancements with ArcMap with 9.3. Sometimes it's the little things that make our day, so let's take a look at some of the new time-saving tips in ArcMap that I think you'll find to be very useful in getting your work done faster and better. Here we see my municipality map that I'm getting ready to publish to share with others. But I have a few things to do first with my map before my job is done for the day. First, I need to set some transparency on my elevation model, or DEM, that you see in the background layer in my display. Notice it here in the legend on my layout, as well as in the table of contents. I am pointing this out because in the past, it was a challenge to get the appearance of transparency in the legend. Now, in the data frame properties, on the general tab, I can specify that I want to simulate layer transparency in the legends. You can see as I adjust the transparency that the changes are reflected in the legend and table of contents. This change has been a popular enhancement request from the user community. In the past, people would have to use the eyedropper tool to change the colors in their legend to achieve a similar effect. Now the workflow is much better and faster. Another ArcMap improvement you may have already noticed today is the new bookmarks menu on the main menu bar in ArcMap, making it easier to access your bookmarks and navigate around the maps. In addition to that nice change is the entirely new bookmark manager at 9.3. I can now select existing bookmarks and change their names. I can also rearrange bookmarks. I can keep the bookmarks manager open permanently when I need to use bookmarks a lot to navigate around my map. I can also change the extent for an existing bookmark if I need to. Another improvement is the ability to save your bookmarks to a file. And I can email these to a colleague, put them on a shared resource to use in other projects, or load them into my other projects, like this, making it easier to share and manage bookmarks at 9.3. There are additional improvements to another tool we use often to navigate around our maps or change the scale. Instead of only seeing ground units or absolute scale in the main scale dialog on the menu, I can now customize the format to use a relative scale in the units of my choice. For example, 1 inch equals x miles, or 1 centimeter equals x kilometers. Or I can create a new scale format if I click New and choose the units and format that I want to see. So I can choose a new format now, and I can enter in scale units in whatever units are meaningful to me. It also converts units automatically, so if I want to use absolute scale again, it converts for me on the fly into my units with miles per inch. With the updates to the Bookmark Manager and the Scale Control, it is much easier to navigate around my map displays at 9.3. There's another nice tool available with labeling at 9.3. We already took a look at some of the new labeling enhancements available with Maplex earlier. But whether you're using Maplex or the standard labeling engine in your maps, you can now temporarily pause labels for all layers in your map with one click. You can then interact with the map, for example, changing the display extent, and not have the labels re-render until you turn pause labeling off. Many of you have your own street data or frequently are tasked with matching tables of addresses to streets or zip codes to create geographic data, a process known as geocoding. 
At 9.3, we've improved the geocoding workflow in many ways. One of those we already saw earlier, the ability to disperse markers using cartographic representations. But let's take a closer look at some of these other new features at 9.3. First, we have a new geocoding toolbar that makes it easier to find some of the existing tools many of you are already familiar with using, such as the Address Locator Manager. The toolbar also includes a new tool called the Address Inspector. I can click the Address Inspector, and as I move around the map, I can see the address for my current location. Notice at the bottom of the ArcMap window, a set of shortcuts is listed. I can press O, for example, to add a callout showing the current address. This tool reduces the number of steps it takes to find an address and create a label for it on the map. Now we'll have a look at some new functionality with batch geocoding. I have a table with incidents that I'll geocode, and you can see that there's a new geocoding panel while the records are being matched. It helps you keep track of how many records are being matched as it is working. This is very useful in cases where there's a problem, particularly if you are geocoding a very large table. Now you can cancel if you think something's amiss. In cases when I need to inspect records that did not match or were matched with ties, the workflow for rematching is better at 9.3. This dialog no longer locks me out from using other tools in the interface, and it makes interactively rematching addresses to the map faster. I can click Zoom to Candidates and easily see which is which. There is also a new Pick Address from Map tool that lets me click the map to geocode an address. The process of interactively rematching addresses makes the geocoding workflow much faster. Next, let's take a look at a variety of shortcuts that can help us save some time doing our jobs at 9.3. We've updated the types of files that get registered with the operating system so that .lyr or layer files can be recognized as an ArcGIS layer file type. This makes it easier now to find them using Windows Explorer or to do something like open them up from an email. I'll drag these layers onto my map. We can look in the Layer Properties on the new Joins and Relates tab to see that this layer has a join. Here I can see what fields are used and what kind of join it is. We've added a new kind of identifying tool at 9.3 to the main tools toolbar, the HTML pop-up tool. From the Layer Properties, I can enable the tool and then use it on a feature on the map. We see a nicely formatted HTML dialog that can be dragged and positioned around the display with a leader line that stays tied to the feature. We also see a traffic cameras layer in the map. Note the camera symbols are rotated to represent the direction that the camera is facing. One of the fields on our traffic camera layer links to a URL that shows the latest photograph taken from the camera. The HTML pop-up dialog is an interesting tool that I think a lot of you will use right away. It can make it easier since it's sort of like the hyperlink and identify tools, all with one click now, and it's presented in a dialog that you can choose to format yourself by writing a little HTML. Next, I'll show you a few shortcuts. We all like shortcuts and clicking less, 